Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Today, we are joined by one of our coaches, Coach Caleb. Hi. And we are going to be going over exercise execution, why it's important, and how we even do it in the online space. Because it is remote, it's very confusing when it comes to actually helping clients with exercise execution. But we really wanted to talk about the benefits of doing so, how we do it at Physique Development, and why we put such a heavy emphasis on it. Um, Is that all, Caleb? Or did I miss anything phenomenal about exercise execution and videos? I mean, I think we'll get into it here. So that was good. Perfect. Uh, So getting started here, Caleb, I wanted to ask you, why do we even begin with coaching exercise execution online? Why is it important? Why do we do it? Why don't we just send out the programs and say, sign RSC at your check-in? Yeah, I think um, the main reason that we focus so much on exercise execution, even in the online space, is because it is kind of our our number one tool for making changes in the body is exercise. And if you're not executing these exercises properly, you can kind of leave results on the table. um, And you can also risk injury, of course, which is uh, not what we want. We want people to be able to exercise for a long period of time without getting hurt or overuse injuries or anything like that. But we also want to squeeze as much as possible out of a single session, which then kind of compounds over a week or a month, or years, um, and then the results kind of pile up from there. So you're saying that if I'm a listener listening to this, I don't want to get injured, and I want to get the best bang for my buck, I should care about exercise execution in the videos? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) Good to know. Um, Sometimes I feel it's very helpful to frame it in the opposite way uh, because it is more of that light bulb of, oh, duh, I need to be focusing on this or this is something that needs my attention kind of as we move forward. So um, within that, how do we do it at Physique Development or how do you do it with your clients to get started? Should they just send and record their whole entire session and send it over to you? Um, What videos should they record? What if they feel very confident within a a video? And we'll get to that part in a second. But let's answer that first two parts of that question. Yeah. um, So the way that I do it, and uh, I'm sure that every physique development coach kind of has a method that is similar to this, um, but we all, I'm sure, have our differences is that I like clients to send me clips of certain exercises. So not your entire workout, but um, you would send me a clip of your exercise that is hopefully labeled nicely and trimmed so I can see exactly what I need to see and only that. Um, And then what I do is I review that and usually I respond with either a video or a voice memo, usually a video. Um, A voice memo would be just to be like, that's perfect. I like that. Keep practicing. But um, usually I'll do it in a video so that I can give feedback and I have your video up and um, I'm kind of critiquing it using like drawing on it, that type of thing. And then also using my own body to show you exactly what we're doing. And um, with that, I'll usually coach it in such a way that we go through the setup first and then exercise execution cues second. Yeah. So when it comes to those videos and and getting those and filming them, why does it matter for someone to send a video instead of, for example, we have a whole arsenal of beautiful videos on the physique development YouTube. Uh, Do those not matter? Does it matter? Do they work in tandem with each other? Why can't just those videos be enough for some people? Yeah, so they certainly work in tandem because they show you what the exercise looks like and often they have cues and explanations of why this exercise is a certain way and what it's working and all of that. But the reason that you still need to um, send these videos in is because you are different. Everyone is different. I have extremely long limbs. Um, Other people have extremely long torsos or short limbs. Um, So, and then machines are different. If you're, say, sending me a pressing motion in a chest press machine, that machine might be very different than the one that we were showing you in the physique development video. But basically what I'm getting at is that all of these variables change the way that an exercise may look on any individual um, or may feel on based on kind of just how you're set up. So 
when you send that video to a coach, they are someone who has a lot of experience of working with kind of like the first principles of setting up an exercise and exercise execution, as well as experience of seeing many different types of bodies in these um, exercises. So then when you send that video, I can look at it and give you guidance that's specific to you um, using the principles of exercise execution rather than if you solely rely on the video, you may be looking at, say, Coach Sue doing an exercise and then try to replicate it exactly the same, but your body is different and that may lead you into incorrect exercise execution if that's all you're relying on. Yeah, and I think that it's also great to point out that if you've never been taught true exercise execution, like correct exercise execution, and I hate to put a blanket over all in-person trainers, but I will say a majority of the in-person trainers that I've seen are not teaching even exercise execution the correct way. And so if you've not had that guidance, then you shouldn't expect yourself to just watch one video and know how to do something. Um, it's something that we've talked about in a recent podcast, and Alex mentioned it, that as adults or as more grown up, so to speak, above 18, we often think that we should just be perfect at things because, again, we're adults. We shouldn't have this trial area. And especially when it comes to our own body or working out, we feel like we shouldn't ask for help help. We should know there's enough information out there, but you don't know what you don't know. And so it's something that I always like to express to clients, regardless if you think you know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing or anything, it's always safe to send a video. We as coaches are not here to berate you and make you feel dumb. We're here to help you to be progressive, to learn more and to understand your body more. And so that's also something that we really like kind of push through within physique development development is that we are here to teach you. And so it is something that um, if you want to get the best use out of your coaching, and we've made posts on this, I believe we've made um, more than just a post on Instagram about it. But if you want to get the most out of your coaching, utilizing these videos is going to be one huge part of that because you're leaving so much on the table of not doing the exercise correctly or not understanding the exercise. So if you are a client, and especially if you're a physique development client, feel free to send a video and be like, ah, I don't know what muscle group this is working, or I'm not sure if the setup is correct, or I feel it in my shoulders and I think this is a chest exercise. Those notes are so helpful because it's also something like Caleb said that we are in a spot where we can watch that and we are at a different level within fitness to be able to help you. That's the reason you hired us because we know something or we have the knowledge of something that we can teach you. And so it's something of being able to watch those videos, give you that guidance and help you along the way is exactly what we're here for and exactly what we want to do. And I will say with very big certainty, the clients that utilize sending the videos versus the clients who don't have very different progress uh, because, again, it's so huge in regards to how things come together for your physique as a whole. Yeah. And and a few things to kind of add is even when you said that a lot of in-person personal trainers um, don't even teach exercise execution correctly. And I think that there's kind of a disconnect sometimes with can you teach exercise execution online? And I just wanted to say that proper exercise execution and someone who really knows how to teach it absolutely can teach it online with very minimal quality loss, if any. Yeah, a hundred percent. I know you send videos to your coach or, you know, mm -hmm. call him and get him to come downstairs. <laughs> um, and I also do. So even as professionals that are watching this stuff, we are constantly using this resource for ourselves. And that kind of just shows how much we value it too. And that leads in perfectly to kind of talking about um, a progression of videos over time and what that looks like. So it is something that when it comes to videos, we do normally have a limit of the amount of videos that you can send in one week. And that is to help us and to help you. The reason for that is when it comes to exercise execution, let's say you send 10 or 20 videos. <laughs> it's something where if you need to have corrections on multiple of those, that is very hard to intake that information and perfectly execute it on so many videos when you have to think so much when you're starting off when it comes to training. So it is something of we try to limit it to five, being able to label the exercises. And like I said, make notes on how things felt because I might see it and it might 
visually look okay, but if you're like, oh, I'm feeling it here, then we can be more specific on why that might be happening or give you a more specific cue because we don't know what we don't know um, as well and we can't read your body perfectly. But within that, let's say that you've had a video reviewed and then uh, a month or so goes by or you get into a tra different training stimuli, is it still important to send a video of that same exercise again if you've already had it critiqued and you feel like you're on the right path? Yeah, I think that sending multiple videos of the same exercise is very helpful. Um, I think that one important thing within that is that we leave enough time to practice the cues that we're given mm -hmm. or the adjustments. So if I send you a video of, say, a biceps curl um, this week, maybe not the most effective if I only have one workout with bicep curls and then I send it again the next week, you kind of want to build some time practicing. So like you said, maybe we're going into a different stimulus and we want to do that Um then yeah, we do want to send multiple videos. And what the, the beauty of multiple videos is, we are very unlikely to ever actually be perfect with any of this. There is always going to be something off because as we get better at exercise execution, we are also getting better at contracting our tissue, at moving heavy loads, and pushing ourselves to a, I guess I should say a more challenging spot neurologically and with that we also will get compensations and technique breakdowns and so basically as you grow within one exercise you are at the you're simultaneously closing doors on all these things that were problems and opening up new potential I wouldn't want to say problems but maybe possibly. leaks or gaps or possibly problems, right? All of a sudden my arm hurts doing these. And it's like, well, that's because we've increased the load 50% over the last six months and you started doing something funky, right? Like maybe that. And I love that you mentioned that because I think that also goes largely hand in hand for you and I sending videos to our coaches. If someone might be for myself, I believe I've been training for like seven years. You might think, oh, why, why would you even need to look at your exercise execution? And it's something that I don't always send every video I take of an exercise directly to my coach. So if you have become more proficient within training, taking a video and just watching it yourself, seeing what you notice and what you don't notice, because that's something that's also going to help your learning. A coach is going to be huge in that guidance along the way, but you taking some initiative as well is going to be large of, oh, I'm watching back my video before I send it to my coach. I'm going to make a note of, hey, I see my elbows out a little bit. I already know I need to fix that. What else do you see? And that's going to help you become a better trainee, and it's going to help you have more awareness of the human body because the number one problem I see when it comes to uh programming for training is lack of knowledge about human anatomy and how it all works together. And that's something that the more that you can learn whenever you do go off on your own, or if you do go off on your own, you have a better understanding. But even if you still use something like the Physique Development Training Club app, um, which, you know, if you want some more information, that'll be in show notes, <laughs> then you could still have that increased knowledge about how the body works and be able to perform your training better. That's something that has so largely changed over my time training is that the more that I've learned about the human body and training, the better I become at training, not just programming. So if you're not having an aspiration of becoming a coach or writing your own programming, you don't have to think just that one route. It's allowed me to become a be better at training, more efficient at training, more efficient at different movements. And then off of that same note, like Caleb was talking about when it comes to increasing load and then making compensation. So I can do a dumbbell lateral raise beautifully with five pounds. It's gorgeous. So it's what I Me mean, too. the stuff of legends. It's beautiful. It's yeah. Textbook ready. But then as it goes up, again, you start to compensate because nothing works alone in isolation in the human body. I'm going to say that again. Nothing works alone or in isolation in the human body. Whenever we talk about an exercise of biasing something or targeting something, we are saying hey, this is the main focus, but there's other things going on. You can't train your glutes 
completely on their own without training any other muscle in your body. There's going to be secondary muscles. There's going to be stabilizer muscles. And so when it comes to performing a movement, you can see as you increase load that you start to compensate to move that same load, where at a lighter load, you could have done it beautifully, textbook ready, good to go. But as you increase load, you might have lost some control or understanding within the movement. So that's a great reason to send another video to get that feedback and see how you can continue to progress as your load increases. Mm -hmm. And even to that, I, I did just kind of remember one point too, is that as we get better at exercise execution, and if we are truly executing very well, your range of motion, your training range of motion can change. And that can also be something that needs to be addressed, um, like a hamstring RDL or Romanian deadlift for those of you who don't use the, the quick RDL. <laughs> um, is a perfect one where if you execute it within your active range for months and months and months, that is going to increase and change mm -hmm. as you gain strength. So another reason to kind of keep coming back to the well of video. Yeah, I love it. And as you can tell, we are both very passionate about mm -hmm. this subject because we have seen so much growth in ourselves and in clients that truly do take the time to take a video. Now, talking about taking the time to take video or taking the video in general, it's something that we run into a lot of clients being afraid to film in the gym, feeling like it's too busy to film in their gym, um, feeling like they shouldn't take up space to film in their gym, uh, whatever it may be, it, we understand that. That, and we do want to speak towards that a little bit um, because we don't just want to go through everything about why it's so important. And then you're sitting there and you're like, I'm scared shitless to record myself in the gym. So Caleb, can you speak to that a little bit about uh, what that is as far as being scared to film in the gym and some advice that you would give to a client or to your past self in regards to filming in the gym? Okay, so with respect to taking a video in the gym, you have the right to take space. This is for you, like this is something that you're doing to increase your ability to exercise properly, get better results, be safer. That's something that you have the right to do. And of course, with proper etiquette, you should feel confident in, in taking the space to do that. And it still might feel scary to kind of set your phone up and take a video, but that is going to yield many results many times over. And most people don't care. I think that we always have that kind of fear in the gym of like, oh, what if I'm doing something wrong or I'm doing it light or like I'm getting in someone's way or taking up too much space. And at the end of the day, I think everyone's got the common goal to change their body and improve their health um, in some way or their fitness. And I think that, um, we should all kind of feel confident in using the tools that we have available to us to, to do that for ourselves. Yeah. I am going to try and find the clapping, um, sound on this board. Oh no, that's a laughing the, the one. The people are laughing at me. Yeah. That's they're <laughs> laughing at you now. I'm yeah, so sorry. That's encouraging. See, uh, Gosh, I was trying to be cool and use one of these buttons on the board and they're not it's... labeled, but I'll make my own clapping. OK, that was oh, beautifully thank you. said. Thank you. Um, I would encourage you guys to rewind and re-listen to that because it's worth being said twice. And the fact of I mean, everything Caleb said there was beautiful. Uh, and it's something that at the end of the day, you need to be able to ask yourself, why do people go to the gym? They go to the gym to become a better version of themselves or to work on something or to improve on something. I don't know anyone personally that goes to the gym just to make fun of other people. And it's something that something that's very freeing to me is that nobody cares. And that could be looked at as like, oh, nobody cares about what I do. But it could also be looked at as nobody cares what I do. And so often we get stuck in our head of how other people are looking at us or viewing us or judging us. We're at the end of the day, let's go ahead and look inward. Are you sitting there judging someone else for doing something in the gym? God, I hope not, because we're all there to either improve our health or to become a better version of ourselves, or some people possibly just there to look better. They're not at that stage of truly wanting to improve their health yet. But again, it all comes down to they're there to try to better themselves. So at the end of the day, exactly like Caleb said, you deserve 
to be able to do something that's going to allow you to have better progression and less injuries. Because if you get stuck in the mindset of, I can't film, I'm too scared to, and I used to too, so I'm not coming from this of, oh, I've always been completely okay to film in the gym. I used to think it would make me seem like I knew what I was doing and I was afraid I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't (laughs) want people to think that I thought that I knew what I was doing. I didn't want people to think that I was hot shit. I didn't want people, I didn't want attention drawn to me. I wanted to take the video to truly see if I was on the right track to be able to improve or because I thought I looked really good and wanted to capture it. And I'm so glad that I forced myself to do that in so many situations that felt uncomfortable and I felt that friction because now I have these videos to look back on and to see the progress that I've made, see how my physique has changed, and I've gotten better at exercising, which again, more efficiency, less injuries, more progress, what about this is on the negative side? Yeah. <laughs> there, there's nothing that's on the negative side. Now, like Caleb said as well, of course, using proper etiquette of not if the gym is packed, taking up six machines to have the perfect angles. And yeah. don't think you need to bring a tripod and a fancy camera into the gym and like lighting and everything for years slash still currently I just would prop up my phone against my water bottle because I have a heavy water bottle in the hydro flask and then just take it at the best angle that I could. And that was completely fine. Now, I do personally have now a tripod where I put my phone in and I'm good to go. But that's not something you have to do. You don't have to have all this extra stuff. Just take your phone. You can use front camera to make sure that you're in the scene. You don't have to have the best quality video that you've ever seen. The coach just needs to be able to see what's going on with the exercise. And they might say, hey, this other angle might be a little bit better for you to go ahead and record from. But if I could really just shake my past self and say, film it anyways, do it anyways, I wish I had done it sooner or more often because I only was inhibiting my own progress because of the fear of judgment of others. Nothing to add to that. Very well said. Okay, perfect. (laughs) Uh, So Caleb, what would you say to the person who thinks their form is good to go? They feel confident in it. They don't feel like they need to send videos. Oh, man. Um, Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, that's a tough one. (laughs) I mean, I don't want to be rude, but I would say kind of something along the lines of open your mind to um, kind of the improvement mindset. So knowing that perfection really isn't a thing here. Um, You're never going to perfectly exercise and execute everything. And that's kind of the reason that exercise execution um, can be rewarding is because we acknowledge that perfection is really not the goal, but progress is. And um, if you don't feel that you need exercise execution tips or anything like that, I think that it's maybe important to kind of understand why you feel that way. Because even if you were to take a video and send it to say me as your coach, and it was really perfect, then you would just get a pat on the back, you know, but there may be ways and there usually are where we can kind of squeeze out little things. And even if we get 1% better, and you are 1% better every time you work out in a few years, that's going to compound, right? And that's going to become a lot. uh, Yeah, that's going to be big. And even if it's not about looking a certain way, or always kind of pushing it, it's just like, even from the perspective of mechanical tension, 1% more is a big deal. When you get advanced at training, you are no longer kind of moving big rocks, you are picking up pebbles, every single day and (laughs) and shavings of rocks yeah yeah. sometimes shaving sometimes it feels like you're losing them um (laughs) but you are it's just like as you get better of course the changes and the need for changes become smaller but they also become more important because that's where your progress lies is in the tiny shavings that you can improve upon 
Yeah. And that's something that um, I personally kind of have a structure for clients. Um, And before I jump into that, I want to finish up as far as the person who thinks they don't need to send video. I would argue you might be the person that needs to send video the most. And this is something where I'm not going to call out someone, but I will say that the clients that have said these kind of sayings to me and I say, hey, we'll just get a video anyways. Otherwise, I'll just praise you and tell you you're good to go. And who doesn't love being praised? And they'll send something and I will make an adjustment. And they normally are very happy for that change to be able to see things. Um, But it is something where I kind of have a structure within clients. Let's say that someone has come to me, they're more of a beginner, they send a video, and there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. I'm not going to sit there and completely shred them of everything that they need to change. I'm going to take where they're at and look at where we need to go. So it is something that if you possibly, you've gotten past the fear of filming, you've gotten the video, you give it to your coach, but now you're scared of what they're going to say about it. It is something that at physique development specifically, we're not trying to knock down your confidence. We're trying to build it up. So I'm not absolutely going to shred someone when there's a million things wrong with an exercise. I'm going to give them one or two actionable things that they can do and then say, hey, I want to see a video in X amount of weeks and we can kind of go through that again. And then as someone becomes more advanced, they start getting into intermediate and advanced. I become more and more nitpicky. And this is how I am with posing as well, where someone who sent the video, I might say, hey, you need to change this and this. And someone else could look at that video and say, they need to change this, 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 and this too. I'm like, all right, but they need time to make those changes and to know and understand them. Because some of the cues or some of the critiquing that Alex gives me now, I wouldn't be able to take that critiquing, not only mentally of feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm doing everything wrong, but I wouldn't be able to conceptualize that critiquing because I wasn't as advanced within my training. So it is something where we very much so tailor it to the person where they're at within training and always trying to progress from there. Um, But one thing I did want to ask you as well, Caleb, is let's say someone is performing it and you say it looks great performing it, but then you had talked about that tension. What does that look like when you are performing it from a view where it looks perfect, but you're not getting that contraction perfectly. What's kind of the gap there? Or what would you tell a client who they are looking like they're doing it right, they're initiating it right, they understand it, but they're not getting that full contraction? Is there something else that they can do? Or is that going to take time? It can be a little bit of both. Um, Generally, I find most of the time that if you set up an exercise properly, and then you perform it, and and let's say that your arm path and all of these things that we talk about are good and it looks good. In more cases than not, you will be getting that tension regardless of if you feel it. Now, sometimes we can use kind of more cues, like in t- intention cues, um, where we're kind of like, thinking about driving certain parts of our body to other parts of our body or thinking of kind of like, um, for instance, with the lats, a lot of the time we want to think of driving our elbows down um, to initiate the movement because sometimes that can be a difference. But um, I do usually find that it comes down to setup um, and the way that someone's set up. But I, and then let's say that we're kind of, we're using those internal cues and we're using the setup and we're using all of that properly and the contraction's still not coming the way that the client wants. I think that in that scenario, it is often just about practice and about getting used to it and moving. Because at the end of the day, if you're set up properly and everything's lined up with the fibers of the muscle that you're working and you're moving the load and you're not kind of, we're not seeing any major compensation movements, the tension is there. It can't be anywhere else, right? If I have everything lined up perfectly to do a biceps curl and the force is lined up through my fibers and I curl, that is maximal tension on the biceps if everything's set up properly. Um, And if you don't feel that or you don't feel like it's right, a lot of the time that's just about practice. Because as you get, like you said, more efficient, more neurologically efficient, um, then you start to feel these things um, just a little more and you get more confidence in that. 
Yeah, and it is under the same guise of kind of eating a salad in a day. It doesn't make you healthy, just like eating a burger doesn't make you unhealthy or a salad's not going to make you lose weight. That kind of concept of, hey, just because you've done the exercise doesn't magically mean now you are the best at performing it. Like Caleb said, you need to grow that efficiency. And it is something where even um, it comes down to the, the way that we program of uh, Alex has recently sent me a training and he's like, for other people, this might be more metabolic based for you because of your ability to contract your muscles. This is going to actually be more hypertrophy based. And so that's something that is also what we keep in mind as coaches to make sure we understand where the client's at, where they need to go, and how that training's going to fit into place here. So it's something that we're very aware of and try to be as proactive as possible, and especially within your communication as a client, to make sure that we're, we're moving that needle forward. But um, it's something where, like I said, we're very passionate about exercise execution. It's something that we have built a very firm foundation on in regards to our programming and that being a huge thing for physique development. But it's also something that we hold that near and dear because we understand what progress can be made by doing that. Like Caleb said, you're not leaving more on the table. You're getting more bang for your buck. You're becoming more efficient. And who the frick doesn't want to be efficient and not be injured when it comes to training? Who doesn't want to grow more muscle or see results faster by just doing something so simple like taking a video and using that to continue to progress within the craft that you're doing. So yeah, I think that this was a a great podcast, not only talk about the importance of exercise execution, but also to walk you through how we do it with clients. So if you're another coach listening, hopefully you can take something from this and to be able to serve your clients better. And if you are someone who wants to become a client or um, maybe you are doing it on your own, you can use these tips for yourself. Again, that's a big thing within this podcast is we try to take side notes of how you can apply this to yourself. And I apply it to myself. Like I said, I don't send every single video to Alex. I take videos. I'll personally critique it. I'll do it again, take another video and keep growing from there to see how I can continue to progress um, by myself. So it is something that is vastly important. It is wildly helpful for your progress. Um, And yeah, that's about all I got to say on it. How about you, Caleb? Any last parting points you want to say before we wrap things up? Uh, Yeah, I think that... um... I would just encourage everyone to kind of take exercise execution seriously. It is the simplest probably thing that you can do to increase your efficiency, um, largely because you're already doing all the things. Um, If you do three (laughs) sets of 10 of something poorly or well, you're doing three sets of 10 of it. So you may as well do it well. And that's going to increase results, make you feel better, keep you safe and uh, reduce injuries along the way. And then also just help you grow as a person um, in a lot in a different way than the gym normally does. So uh, yeah, I just want to kind of give one more word of encouragement for everyone to kind of pull out their cameras and use this new ability to do that in the gym and uh, hone in your exercise execution. Yeah, I love it. And if you're listening to this, and you're thinking, wow, Caleb seems like a freaking <laughs> awesome coach. I want to work with him. You're probably not alone. Uh, but if you want to work with Caleb, in the show notes is going to be a link to inquire to work with him. He'll get on a call, kind of talk through things. And if you want to know more on Caleb, he does have his own podcast episode talking about his journey and also talking about the clientele that he feels very passionate about working with. So definitely go check that out. That'll be linked in the show notes as well. And then his Instagram, so you can follow along. He's been cranking out out some beautiful content. <laughs> so he even has a whole infographic slide carousel on exercise execution. So if you wanted to save the cliff notes of this, then that Instagram will um, post will also be linked in the show notes. And you know, just to bring one more reason for you to go to the show notes. There's not only a form in there. So if you have a topic or a question that you want us to address in the podcast, you can go ahead and drop it in there. But also for our podcast listeners, because we love you so much, there is now a 10% discount code on the band tees. It is uh, use the code PDPOD. So that's 
P-D-P-O-D, and you'll get 10% off the band tees. If you're getting the bundle of band tees, the discount won't um, apply because there's already a discount for getting two of the band tees. So if you just get one, you'll get that 10% discount just for being a podcast listener. Um, And you can add other things to your cart, but it will just apply to that shirt because we do possibly, maybe, you know, have some new stuff coming. So we got to clear out the storage for that and get things moving and grooving. But thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, It's something that coming into 2022, we were very passionate about being more consistent within the podcast. So we've uh, kind of nailed this down of making sure that we get these out once a week and we're really trying to transition to two times a week. So anything that you would like to hear, we want to cater to that and make sure we help you. But definitely go give Caleb a a look out. Go check him out. (laughs) I'm (laughs) lost phrasing on words there. Go check him out on Instagram. Go listen to his other podcasts. Inquire to work with him as a coach. He is someone who is, I mean, a rising star in physique development. I'm so excited (laughs) to see exactly where he goes uh, within coaching because I think that we're going to look back in a few years and be like, oh, shit. (laughs) Caleb went and did the thing. Uh, But thank you guys again for listening or watching if you're on YouTube and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Bye. Bye.